Hey there, Milwaukee scholars. Mr. Kirkconnell here. As you can see, it's been getting pretty cold in Milwaukee recently, so I am over here in Taiwan. It is much warmer, although right now the weather's not so great. Anyway, you can see behind me is Taipei 101, the tallest building in Taiwan. I have got some really great music lessons for you today, so let's see what's in store. Today we have something a little bit new. I have attached my own project to this to get you started. We are going to improvise with a backing track. Let's check it out. Make sure you choose the teacher's assignment this time. That's very important for this to work. So now you see, I have done a little bit of work for you. I have made two backtracks for you. You can listen to both of them. What you'll do is you'll take one of them, you'll mute it, and now you're going to hear this other one. All right, that's fine. We'll listen to a bit of the other one. Okay, so I think they both have pretty different styles. Hopefully one of them you will like a lot. I'm going to start with this backing track too. So the first thing I need to do, look over here, we just did our listen. The next thing we do is we choose the one we want and we delete the other one. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. I can just right click and delete the whole track. Now it's not in my way anymore. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to record our improvisation with a MIDI instrument. I've also got the MIDI instrument here for you. Go down to the bottom, check what it is. Right now it's piano. Let's go ahead and change that up. Uh, let's turn it into winds. Let's see if we can get a saxophone. There we go, we've got a saxophone. Now, a lot of times these MIDI saxophones do not sound great, but we're gonna try it out and just see how it works. So we've got our typing keyboard here at the bottom. Yeah, so that's pretty clearly not a real saxophone, but we'll work with it for today. And as you can see, we are going to use the black piano keys only. That is how I have this set up. That is going to be the best way for you to improvise. You are going to be able to play whatever you want on those black keys, and it shouldn't sound out or crunchy or anything like that. So now all we've got to do is we're going to record, and then you can just type away. I'll do a little bit, and then we'll stop it not too long. All right, so we've got a bit in there. Let's go ahead and listen to how it sounds together. All right, so that doesn't sound too bad. The first thing I'm gonna do, since this musical typing is not perfect, I'm gonna go down to the MIDI editor Click down here, hit Control A, get everything in, and we're gonna quantize it. The 116 or maybe 18 is gonna be good depending on how fast you played. And then after that, I like to hit the humanize button. That's just gonna move things around a tiny bit, make it sound less like a robot. Now, the next thing we want to do, we want to make sure that we balance both of our tracks. So right now, I would say... Yeah, the improvisation that I made is pretty soft, so we're gonna take the backing track, we're gonna bring it down a bit. Uh, you can see these numbers here. This DB, that stands for decibels. That is how we measure volume. And the pretty much the only thing you need to know about that is that every three decibels means the volume got twice as loud or 
in negative decibels half as loud. So we're going to start just with three and see how that works. All right, I think that's a pretty good spot for it. We've got this down at negative seven decibels and I can hear the improvisation a lot better now. So if I want, I can go back into this. I can move around my notes. If there's something that's not quite the way I want it to be, I can make the note. I can put it up, put it back down. If I want, I can make this longer. You can drag on these. You can even make a new note just by double clicking like that. So you can do pretty much whatever you want. You can start with your musical typing and then you can go back into the MIDI editor and tweak it until you really like it. Or if you don't like it, you can just delete it and start over. But we're not going to do that right now. So I'm going to control Z that right now. I'm basically done. We're going to keep this nice and short. So just remember those two things. We're going to learn how to mute and solo so that we can listen to one backing track at a time. And then we're going to balance the volume of each track. See, we brought the volume down over here. The last thing we're going to do, we're going to go find the end of my solo. As you can see, we've got a whole lot more of this backing track left afterwards, but we don't need that. So we're going to learn one more thing. We're just going to go a little later. If you want, you can add in another MIDI instrument and have another improvisation afterwards and you can fill up more time, but we're not going to do that right now. I'm going to right click, hit slice. And now you see I have split my music into two. So now I can delete the end and I can make it shorter. Now this is still going to have a pretty sharp cutoff. That's not quite what I want. So we're going to do something pretty fancy. Hit the A button. And now you see it's going to bring up these lines. This is called automation. We can change how things are at any given time. While the solo was going on, we wanted it down here. But now that it's over, we're going to add a fade out. So make sure you click on the line for your backing track right after your solo. And then click at the very end and drag that last one all the way down. And let's hear how that sounds. All right, so that's basically all there is to it. You can tweak it to make sure it sounds just the way you like it. And then when you're done, go ahead and submit. As always, add in your note. And maybe you can surprise me with a new emoji. Uh, let's go with the king this time. Got a crown. And boom, that's all there is to it. Short lesson today, but we're still picking up new skills. Have a great weekend.